Hello, everyone. Growth is key to achieve long-term prosperity and well-being for all. At Bridgewater, this is our mission and everyday obsession to develop remarkable networks that bridge and deliver growth opportunities. If, like us, you believe sustainable growth is key, this is your podcast. Welcome to Let's Scale, the Bridgewater podcast powered by Scale Up Value that puts growth at the center of conversations. We are Paul Morgat and Anna Paula Reis, the founders of Bridgewater and your hosts for the next hour. Today we have with us John Bream. John, a former executive at Capgemini, where he was worldwide responsible for insights and data, is the founder of Meistering. John, tell us, what is Meistering and Master Collections? Hi, Paulo and Anna. Yeah, Meistering is a scale-up that will conquer the world, we think, with a new platform to help business leaders execute on strategic thinking, put strategic thinking into action. And actually we carry a platform that is called Master Collections, as we call business leaders masters. So we have Master Collections to support business leaders. So you notice that uh, master is a beautiful word that um, actually is also in the name of our company, Meistering, with a little bit of a twink because Meistering also refers to the fact that our platform is quite infused with practical AI, not theoretical AI, but practical AI. So the gentlemen and gentlewomen that run the business in Iberia, the masters, they spend a lot of their time on, 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 on envisioning, plotting, mobilizing, uh, executing on journeys. So, Paolo, um, our platform is all about orchestrating journeys. And the funny thing is that most companies are in a kind of traffic jam where they have too many strategic initiatives, too few people to execute them while running their daily business uh, at the same time. And no one is helping them from a technology point of view in running those business, those business journeys. And that's exactly what we do. So the short answer to your question, Paolo, Meistering is a scale-up that has a unique platform to orchestrate business journeys to put more of the strategic thinking into action. Okay, John, just a clarification here, because I think our audience uh, might be curious about what journey means exactly. Can you tell us the difference between a journey and a project, a journey and a process? Because sometimes people uh, say, well, I have already my tools to control, to control the, uh, the progression of processes. This is not the case, I believe. Yeah, obviously most enterprises have pretty good line of business systems, right? That help them to run the big processes, right? That repeat and repeat. Now these line of business systems, they're good to actually keep your company going, to run your business. What we do is we help you shape the business for tomorrow. So that's not with business processes, but with business journeys. And indeed, Paolo, uh, a project, a technical project is, you know, important. Uh, there are like thousands of those in, in most enterprises, but the technical project management, yeah, that's easy. But the real thing is strategic initiatives, where you have a whole cycle, where you have change management, where you have objectives, where you have whole teams involved. That has very little to do with classical technical project management. What we do on our platform, we help you do the big things, like open a new flagship store in another country, or set up a new e-commerce channel, or maybe become better in digital execution, or maybe set up a whole new product assortment, or become more attractive for millennials, as your company might have a bit of an old image. Those big journeys, sustainability, uh, health, safety, uh, growth, right, Anna and Paolo, as you guys are obsessed with, how can we grow faster? Those growth journeys, portfolio journeys, innovation journeys, optimization journeys, crisis journeys, that's what you can do 
in our platform. And that's far beyond classical project management indeed, Paolo. So a lot of experience and reflection has gone into developing the platform. We can see from what you're saying. Can you explain how and why Mastering was created? Yeah, I'd love to, Anna. So we were created almost three years ago and, well, have spent more than two years actually developing this unique platform. Uh, it's, it's holistic, it's rich, it's super easy to use, it's organic to deploy, and it was not like a quick one, right? So 75 people uh, in India, in Spain, in Netherlands worked on this platform. And uh, for two years, we developed it. We spoke with hundreds of customers to learn from them. And we only started selling this year as we wanted to get the platform right. And now every two months, we accept a new launching customer and we pay a lot of attention to those customers, right? Uh, first year, we will do between five and 10 customers. Next year, 50. And then in the end, in three, four, five years, we will cover thousands of enterprises across the world. So the, the foundations have to be right. And our launching customers help us with that. So scaling is key for us, right? So Anna and Paolo, you, you guys are focused on scaling and so are we. So um, the platform there is made available at affordable monthly subscription pricing, right? It doesn't require big investments. Uh, it's affordable monthly subscription pricing so we can really go for volume. But in the first year, as you can imagine, we pay a lot of attention with our team of 75 consultants and engineers to each of the launching customers. Now, our mission is to really help enterprises become digital in a short period of time. And, and therefore they need a light and flexible roadmap. And, and we take care of everything then, the configuration, the wiring, the, the business consulting around the implementation and everything. So it's, it's a great experience for launching customers, they told me. Mm. So it's so vital that we combine, and we have it in our genes, we combine the platform, hard knowledge, and hard assets with a consulting attitude where we customize stuff for our launching customers. So that makes the tooling, you know, I call it tooling, but obviously it's tooling with a capital T, right? That makes this tooling a game changer for any, any enterprise that today aims to be digital, data-driven and collaborative. And, and there also triggers me another, another remark, which is a uh, question. Uh, what is the role that plays the fact that you were insight and data responsible worldwide for Capgemini in the development of this platform? Yeah, well, nice question. Well, two answers. Uh, this beautiful company, Capgemini, right, with 250,000 people worldwide. So I ran this global business around insights and data, everything related to big data, fast data, smart data, analytics, and AI. Obviously, I took two things from that long history I had with Capgemini. One is this absolute, absolute focus on customers and, and getting it right on the spot. It's not a product company, Capgemini. We are. And the second thing uh, I brought from my, from my job at Camp Gemini is this world-class uh, AI and data drive because our platform is a bunch of services wrapped around journeys, true, but it's very data-driven. It's very ai infused John, uh, can you tell us more about the platform? Why do you consider that it's so unique? Well, obviously, a lot of folks, right, Paolo, think that their, that their product is unique, but very few are indeed unique. And actually, I shouldn't be the guy to, um, to brag about our uniqueness. But it's a fact that the topic of our platform, which is business journey orchestration, simply doesn't exist in platforms. It's almost like it's forgotten. All the technology is focused on running the business. 
and and we are the only platform in the world that allows you to articulate and execute these journeys on the fly with your team. So the whole purpose of this platform is to speed up strategic initiatives and give them more punch, you know, give them more impact. And it's all about speed and punch. Now, that's the uniqueness. By working with master collections, it's all about your portfolio of initiatives, both top down and bottom up, right? It's top down, starting with the master, it's bottom up, starting with the collaboration on the work form. So you could also say, maybe that sounds a bit, well, I, I hope it doesn't sound insulting, right? Uh, like a lack of respect, but let's be honest, right? There are a lot of enterprises out there where there is good strategic thinking, but where the steering wheel, wheel is not enough connected with the wheels of the car. So where the rubber meets the, meets the road. And our platform actually helps to connect the steering wheel of strategic thinking with the wheels, right? Of that, the pure execution in the enterprise. Now the platform is unique in its scope, but it's not unique in, in its execution as it is a very modern state of the art platform that most people would recognize, right? It feels like an app. It's very light, it runs on your mobile, it runs on your laptop, it runs on the big screen in your conference room. It is a cloud-based platform. Uh, it is built on top of Teams, Outlook, SharePoint. Um, it, it, it embraces the whole collaborative Microsoft suite and it therefore leverages all your existing investments as an enterprise, but it just adds tremendous value by making it more data-driven and more AI-infused and actually by connecting it to your strategic initiatives, contextualizing and personalizing the information. So it is unique because it's a business orchestration platform. It is not unique in the sense that it kind of naturally blends in to your landscape, to your existing technology landscape in the enterprise, right? It allows you to easily connect not only with the Microsoft tooling, but also we then easily wire with your existing line of business systems. So we kind of take the information out of your line of business systems and out of your collaborative systems and out of your data warehouses and stream them to the fingertips of the masters, contextualized and personalized journey by journey. Okay. One of the things that characterizes the platform is the five engines. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're, you're very deep, Paolo. So you want me to talk about the five engines, right? They are like a nervous system, right? Present throughout the platform. They simply pop up when a master or the team needs to explore or execute. So let me just tell you the names of the engines, right? Uh, to, to educate your listeners as well. As you know, you know, Paolo, I know. Uh, the five engines um, are about insights, creativity, execution, collaboration, and trust. Mm -hmm. Now they're under the hood, but they pop up whenever it is required by you for the journey. It is required from a big strategic journey motive, or it is required from a mundane daily activity point of view. Now, let me show you how the five engines actually change the game. Today, if you need insights, it might cost you quite a bit of time, right? To, to figure out around a new topic, let's say sustainability, let's say carbon emissions, um, you need to do a lot of manual, manual work. You might need to bring in consulting. What we do with the insights engine on the spot real time, we pop up the initiatives for you. 
by scratching the, the web, by peering into your knowledge base, by helping you to brainstorm, to ideate, to mind map. So that's the insights engine. The collaboration engine, like I explained to you, is completely built on top of all the Microsoft stuff. So the video conferencing, touching people, uh, gathering people for meetings, sharing documents, all of that will be done by the collaboration engine. And um, the platform somehow knows whether it should call in team A or team B, depending on which journey you're acting on. The creativity engine is like rich. It basically contains management techniques that you have learned during your master of business administration a long time ago. And, and whether you want to mind map or ideate or whether you want to do a stakeholder analysis or a SWOT analysis, you can do all of that uh, on the spot, by the way, not just you, but you and your team. And all of the stuff that happens in that creative activity will then also be translated on the spot to practical actions. Now, the execution engine is all about digital tasking, Kanban, sprints, all the modern stuff, right, of agile business uh, behaviors. But the execution engine is also all about KPIs. There's a whole KPI library on the platform, Paolo and Anna that you can kind of drag and drop individual KPIs to a specific journey. And then the execution engine is helping you to keep track and, and, and signal to you whether there is somewhere an anomaly, whether something is going too high or too low, taps you on the shoulders. So that's the execution engine. And finally, uh, to, um, to end with the five engines, the trust engine makes everything transparent. Uh, by the way, allows you to see what, what you're allowed to see, or basically make sure that you don't see what you're not allowed to see. Share stuff and uh, make sure that GDPR conditions, etc., are all obeyed. So five engines that actually make the platform very rich, very practical, but also makes you as a master, well, we would say augmented as if you are like an uh, iron man with bionic arms using the five engines whenever you pass. so quite sophisticated john from what we understand um does that mean that it will only suit masters of big companies no 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 so yes of course anna masters at big companies would love this maybe mostly because it adds agility to them and their teams, to their enterprise, right? A lot of big enterprises actually are, well, let's say this polite, big animals that might have too many layers, are a little bit too bureaucratic, are a little bit too slow, uh, sure, lots of wisdom, but quite fragmented and our platform actually helps them to become agile animals. But no, this platform is equally interesting for smaller companies, well, not small, small companies, but let's say mid-sized companies, small to mid-sized companies, because they would love the platform for its sophistication, because you know all the insights, all the creative tools that we will bring uh, to them uh, actually will, yeah, will enrich them. Now, am I saying that sophistication is not required anymore in big enterprise? Sure, enterprises will love it for its agility, but also appreciate the sophistication. And am I saying that medium enterprises only want this for the sophistication? No, they will also appreciate it for the agility because let's be honest, even mid-sized companies can sometimes be more agile. So it's all about sophistication and agility, both for big companies and mid-sized companies. But the balance between the two values might be different from one company to the other. Can you tell you, 
can you tell us about your first customer? Yeah, the, this beautiful company in Norway, Master Bakeren, Master Bakers, uh, allows us to, to talk a bit about their story, right? And obviously it would be better if you would hear it from, from Thor, the CEO, and Steiner, the CIO and the crew themselves. But uh, this is a company which I would consider to be a mid-sized company. It's one of the three leaders in Norway. They have like 750 people. They service like 750 supermarkets with, with uh, delicious pastries and uh, healthy bread. And uh, they have like 10 factories. And actually uh, they brought us in to, to become both more digital and more agile. And um, uh, the first thing they challenged us with is, could you just in a pilot show us how master collections makes it different to implement, let's say, a product quality process, right? And indeed, in two months time, we designed the, the, the quality process with them. We implemented in those same two months in two of their factories, both for blue collar and white collar workers. We, we unlocked quality information they had for many years and we streamed that to the fingertips of basically the entire management team and entire operational leadership. And they loved it. And after two months, they said, okay, please guys go on. And then we rolled out that same process to all the 10 factories. And uh, since then, right in the months after, we have um, taken on many journeys with them. Journeys about digital linification, journeys about digital innovation, journeys about sustainability, lots of different journeys. And most of all, we have kind of changed the life of the company, the management team and the teams by helping them to digitalize daily life. So one example, and Paul and I, of course, would not go too deep, but this company, Master Bakeren, has a brilliant vision on how to be best in taste and at the same time be convenient and simple to use for their customers and consumers. And we took their value pledge and their value statements and we connected them with 25 KPIs and we basically connected the steering wheel with the wheels of the car. And now those 25 KPIs are popping up everywhere. And you're able to connect the big, big objectives of the company with all the practical initiatives and see initiative by initiative how they are doing um, in the KPIs and through the actions. So you can see there is a lot of value added to that client or in fact, from all you been telling us and can you share any major learnings from that that other clients will benefit that my string is benefiting from yeah well the value we add Anna to the customer is basically in, in you could say two directions one right one is it helps you to get a grip on your portfolio of strategic initiatives and, and help execute them faster, richer, and with more punch. And the second thing is it simply helps you to digitalize daily life for the entire company. The two things in a way are related as you can imagine, right? Because your strategic initiatives influence daily life and what you do in daily life hopefully contributes to your strategic initiatives. So those are the two areas of value that we add. Now I could go more granular, but let's not do this, that in this podcast, but basically, depending on the journeys that you engage in through the platform, through master collections, you will have a great business case. I mean, if you're going for sustainability journeys, that business case will be improved by master collections. If you go for, let's say, growth journeys, that business case will be improved by master collections. If you go for 
supply chain improvements, that business case will be supported and improved by master collections. So the value we add actually is indefinite. I know that sounds like, yeah, almost difficult to believe, right? But it's simple. If you have 20 brilliant journeys, but you have a traffic jam and you have difficulty executing them, you miss a lot of great value. If our platform helps you to execute those 20 or those 50, or some companies might even have 100 journeys going on simultaneously, right? If you, if you are better able to execute those strategic initiatives, that's incredible business value. And that's our simple logic, right? So um, yeah, the learnings, Anna, that I could share, actually might not surprise you, right? Um, but it's so real. So first of all, we say, start with one pilot, start with one journey only, start with one master and one team only, right? Like I said, it's not surprising you probably because this is the, the, the famous wisdom of modern times, right? Think big, as by the way, you guys are doing, Paolo and Anna, I mean, it's incredible how big you think over there in Iberia. So think big, but start small and then scale up fast. So that's how we do it. Our implementation philosophy is, is extreme. We start small and then we, we, we scale up like hell. Um, so it is good, a second learning, it is good to simply start with the ambition and the objectives of the, of the management team. There's no shame in that. I mean, basically, leadership generally has good strategic ideas, right? The problem in most enterprises is poor execution, as Paolo would often teach us, right? And, um, and what we do with the platform, well, we, we give them these bionic arms, right? And we connect the steering wheel with the wheels, but we connect leadership in a, well, it sounds almost, almost a, a bit arrogant, but we, we help the leadership to be more collaborative with their teams in a digital way. So in that sense, the platform is crazy. It's bottom up, it's top down, it's top down, it's bottom up. And that's modern enterprise, right? If you get that right, you, you will win. So another learning that uh, the third one that I would bring in, Anna, is that um, things are easier than people sometimes think. So what I often see these days is that people have been so kind of subdued, so kind of, well, depressed sometimes by the inability of um, IT to, to get things going. And I say, no, it's not as difficult as you think. If you organize properly the implementation and you work with our platform, you're amazed how fast we can do things. And that is not to say that we are better on a than the classical IT, that's not my point. But the point is classical IT is great in running the big processes. And that was Paolo's point, right? We, we are not about the big processes, we are about the big journeys. And classical IT was just bad in that. And our platform is made for that. So that's my third learning, like we ourselves were amazed about the speed on how fast we could revamp things. Um, in, 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 in Master Bakker. Um, the platform is built for it, number one. And number two, we with our 75 consultants and engineers, we go in, in a kind of fanatical play to just do things fast and easy in a way that, that actually fits with the culture of the company. And people are not used to that. People are used to buy products and then actually discover that it's not so easy to implement, that it's not so easy to change the behavior of the people. And I say, my third learning is, it is easier than you think. If the platform is right, and if you get the right attention from the implementation crew. John, I think we have now a, a pretty good idea what mastering is about. Uh, 
I invite you to change a little bit subject and to talk about the partnership between Meistering and Bridgewood and starting to ask you what is the goal behind it. Yeah, well, there, there are several goals behind it, right, Paulo? And Bridgewood is, is like the scale up like we are. Right? You, you just started in Iberia. And I must say it's phenomenal how you have scaled up, right? So um, the objectives are objectives from your side, are objectives from our side. It's very bi-directional. And that's actually how you create a community, right? So it's, it's mutual. So uh, the goal of the partnering, and let's just start egoistically uh, with ourselves, is simple. We would like to grow in Iberia. And uh, Bridgewood simply helps us by being part of that great community that you're building. And also, by the way, Paula and Anna, by using your 20 lever growth framework, because that's, that's so grand. And we used it in Iberia, but let me tell you, we used that outside of Iberia too now. So that's the first objective. We would simply like to grow in Iberia. And then we have a few more objectives, but let's talk about that later. Let's not be too egoistic. I think the objectives for Bridgewater in the partnership are simply to use master collections as a great platform for your own journeys. And by the way, to bring some of the richness of master collections to your members in the network. So the goal of partnering with Bridgewater is to add value to you and your community and to grow faster in Iberia. And those two, two things go simply hand in hand. And what about, you mentioned the uh, specifically the Bridgewater 20 levers of growth. Can you tell us how you're thinking and how you will be benefiting from, from that? Yeah, well, at first, when I, I, I learned about the 20 levers of growth, I was impressed by, I would say, the, the completeness, the depth, the width and the depth of the framework, right? That was my first feeling. I still remember that pretty well. I thought, my God, I have been in business development kind of my whole life, but I would not have been able to articulate it like that. The second feeling was... Well, I thought, damn, that's a lot, right? How do I handle that? And then I learned that actually the, the, the whole point about the 20 levers is that you focus on levers that are relevant for you in your competitive position, given the state of development of your enterprise, right? What's important in your industry? Some levers are more important than others. And what's, what's, where are you weak and where, where are you strong? And, and that was my third reaction. I thought, damn, not only is the framework pretty brilliant in its holism, in its width and depth, but this, the, the final point was it helped me to focus. And actually, that's, yeah, that's what it just did, because I, I must be honest with you, no shame in that. I changed some things in the way uh, I scaled up because of what I learned uh, from, from you guys and those 20 leaders. So yeah, that's, that's basically my own experience. But of course, it's not just about the 20 leaders. It's also simply about the practical power of the network, Anna. Right, let's be, let's be practical. John Bridge, what is, is doing a pilot with you? Can, can you elaborate a little bit more about the pilot uh, and uh, what are the what bridge what can can extract from this yeah the the the, the, the pilot obviously bridge what and, and i'm at liberty to speak a bit about it as you guys are a reference for us as well a reference in the making but obviously the first simple answer is you are scaling up, you are growing, you are positioning, you are on several business journeys yourself and you can use the platform for that. But that's not the thing that drives 
us in our project with Rich, what, what drives us is this, I would say, fanatical attitude of Paolo and Anna to, to add more richness to the members of the network. And actually that's the key to our project, right, Paolo? So the, the project is actually about infusing more AI in the way that Richbot operates, infusing more AI to profile and, uh, and, and match members on the network, but also AI that in the future, but this is, this is the next phase that can be used by your members to, to help them on their growth journeys is that's what the network is all about, right? So the network is all about um, offering the community that helps all the members to grow, but also as you guys enrich and enrich and enrich the platform behind the network. The platform itself will become a tool set for growth. It will contain growth drivers. And you know, that's your vision. I shouldn't speak about it, but actually, uh, I'm grateful because Paolo and Anna, you guys discovered that a lot of the richness that we have on the Master Collections platform is actually pretty interesting to uh, offer to your members in the future uh, for their own growth journeys. So that's basically the two, uh, the two big uh, objectives. And the first project is about the profiling and the matching. And the next projects will be more about how can we practically uh, offer, provide members part of the richness of our platform through your platform. John, can you tell us a bit about how you see master, uh, mastering developing? Uh, what's your I, big idea and your development plans? So, actually, it's pretty simple, Anna. So, we are a platform that can cover any industry, any domain, right? So we can do finance journeys, we can logistical journeys, we can commercial journeys, we can do marketing journeys, we can do innovation journeys, we can do innovation journeys in telco, we can do innovation journeys in, in bakeries. And um, our, our growth plan therefore is to to basically spread across the world the same way that, for example, SAP and Salesforce have, have spread agnostically across industries and across domains and across geographies. And I know that sounds like uh, maybe a bit arrogant for a scale-up company, but yes, uh, also SAP and Salesforce started small and they started with this big ambition and we do exactly the same. I mean, if SAP is the king of the business processes, we want to be the king of the business journeys. And as we now see that 80% of the time of masters is actually not about business processes because those, you know, those beautiful things run kind of on their own, but 80% of time that masters in enterprise spent is actually on business journeys. Our plan is very simple, Anna. We would like to just cover as many enterprises as we can in as many industries as in many countries as we can, and then it will grow. However, of course, that's the big, the big plan, but you have to start somewhere, right? So we decided to start in a few countries and we selected some industries. And um, uh, actually, Iberia is one of the regions that we selected uh, for our start. And we had good reasons for that. And, and uh, can you elaborate a little more on the good reasons for that? Yeah, sure, Paul. Well, first of all, we like the, we like the, I would almost say the, 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 the ambition in Iberia, right? So it's, 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 an, it's a mature uh, region for sure. It's a sophisticated region, but at the same time, it's still young. In a way it's young. 
right? Despite your incredible history, in a way, economically, there is this ambition of a young economy. And uh, I think Spain uh, and Portugal have proven in the past decades that, um, that um, the choice between stagnation and, uh, and growth is one of, I would say, mental, mental energy, by the way, Paul and Anna, that's exactly what you guys do, right? You say, let's grow, right? Let's grow. So we feel that attitude in Iberia. So that's one reason. The second reason is just an interesting market uh, with lots of companies that actually uh, have digital ambitions and transformational ambitions. So that fits. And third, it is a great gateway to other areas such as in Africa and Latin America. No need to explain that to you, right? So we started in Europe, we started in Netherlands, Scandinavia, and actually Iberia. Next step would be like more Germany and France and UK. Let's call it the more, of a, uh, the, 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 the more established economies. Uh, and in parallel to making that step, we will move to the US and to Latin America. And third step, we will move to Asia uh, and Africa. And uh, establishing ourselves in Iberia, uh, we think is a good midterm uh, move as well. So just, I think it's time for you to tell us what's the best way to get acquainted with mastering. Yeah, Paolo and Anna, there, there's uh, two fast ways, right? One is to, uh, to just, uh, trust on Paolo and Anna and Bridgewood to, uh, to open up the power of your members to any other company. So yes, I'm sure that if, uh, as, as you guys have a great network, anyone in your network, feel free, I would say to ask Paolo and Anna and I will be one phone call away. So that's number one. Number two is, you know, just connect with us, right? And uh, let's not do the paper thing, right? So don't ask me, to send your documentation or anything, just you know, invest one hour of your life and let me change your life. We will give you a customized demo that will really change your perspective on, on strategic initiatives and execution and on digital transformation. So short answer, Anna, is love to give uh, a demo of 60 or 90 minutes to, uh, to any um, master um, and uh, hopefully prove to be a game changer for you and then start an ultra light pilot. And then you really know. Okay, John, uh, time to close. Um, thank you for being with us and letting us know about uh, more about this great project, Meistering. Um, this was in, really a very insightful interview. And now to our audience, I invite you uh, to please consider John invitation and contact him and the team uh, to experience Meistering and how they can support you. As to you, our listeners, we hope you continue to follow Bridgewatt on LinkedIn, bridgewatt.com and through our Let's Scale podcast. Stay tuned for more growth stories. Let's scale, let's grow. Let's scale, let's grow.